The Vorkarian's clawed fingers tightened around Captain Marcus Holmes' neck as he choked out his last breath, knowing that saving the alien girl from the smoldering wreckage would be the greatest regret of his pathetic human life. Marcus was chief of security on the remote human colony world of Arcadia Prime, located on the fringes of Vorkarian space. The Vorkarians were a proud warrior race, known across the galaxy for their advanced tech, fierce independence, and disdain for lesser species like humans. When a damaged Vorkarian scout ship crash-landed near the colony, Marcus's superiors ordered him to take a cautious approach. But the rugged ex-soldier couldn't ignore his gut. He rushed to the wreckage alone, desperate to find survivors. Amidst the twisted metal and sparking wires, Marcus discovered a badly injured Vorkarian female named Weizen. His training kicked in. He pulled her from the ship, treated her wounds, and snuck her to an abandoned bunker to recover in secret. He knew both their peoples would condemn this forbidden act of compassion. As Weizen healed, her violet eyes blazed with hostility. All her life, she'd been taught that humans were primitive and untrustworthy. Marcus brought her food and medicine, his gentle demeanor chipping away at her preconceptions with each passing day. But Weizen's absence had been noticed. A menacing Vorkarian battlecruiser loomed in orbit, helmed by the ruthless General Zorgax. He demanded the return of their missing scout, vowing brutal retribution if the humans had caused her disappearance or death. Tensions boiled over in the human colony. Hawks called for a defiant stand against Vorkarian aggression. Others pleaded for diplomacy to avert catastrophe. Little did they realize that the key to peace lay in the bond quietly forming between a human soldier and Vorkarian warrior, hidden away in a lonely frontier bunker. As Marcus tended to Weizen, a forbidden friendship blossomed. He began to question the prejudice coloring human Vorkarian relations. And Weizen glimpsed the compassion and individuality of the human spirit, so foreign to her rigid militaristic upbringing. But time was running out. Zorgax's battlecruiser hung in the sky like a sword of Damocles, ready to rain fire and blood on the human settlers below. The stage was set for a war that would consume both their worlds, unless an unlikely alliance could rise from the shadows to challenge the ancient hatreds that divided them. Marcus's mind raced as he paced the confines of the bunker, the weight of the impending conflict between his people and the Vorkarians heavy on his shoulders. He knew that returning Wazen to her kind was the only way to prevent all-out war, but doing so without revealing his role in her rescue would be a dangerous gambit. He turned to his trusted friend and fellow ex-soldier, Lieutenant Jack Ryder. Jack, I need your help. We've got to get Wazen back to her people without anyone finding out I was involved. Jack's brow furrowed. That's a tall order, Marcus. The colony's on high alert and the Vorkarians are scouring the area for any sign of her. Marcus nodded, his heart made. I know, but I've got a plan. I need you to create a diversion, something that will draw the attention of both our security forces and the Vorkarian scouts. I'll use the chaos to sneak Wazen out of the colony and make it look like she escaped on her own. Jack's eyes widened, but he didn't hesitate. I'm with you, brother. Just tell me what you need. As Jack set to work rigging a series of controlled explosions near the colony's perimeter, Marcus returned to the bunker to prepare Wesen for the treacherous journey ahead. We don't have much time, he said, his voice low and urgent. I'm going to get you back to your people, but we'll have to move fast and stay out of sight. Wesen's violet eyes locked with his, a mix of gratitude and something more profound swirling in their depths. Marcus. I... There's something you need to know. I'm not just a simple scout. My father is a high-ranking Vorkarian general. If I'm captured or killed... Marcus felt his heart constrict, the gravity of the situation sinking in. I won't let that happen, Wazen. I promise. The distant sound of explosions signaled that Jack's diversion had begun. Marcus and Wazen slipped out of the bunker navigating the colony's winding corridors and shadowed alleys as alarms blared and security teams rushed to investigate the disturbance. As they neared the extraction point, 
a group of armed human vigilantes emerged from the shadows, their weapons trained on Wazen. There's the alien invader, one of them shouted, his finger tightening on the trigger. Marcus reacted on instinct, pushing Wazen behind him as he drew his own weapon. The firefight erupted around them, the air thick with the smell of scorched metal and ozone. Weizen watched in awe as Marcus fought with a skill and ferocity she had never witnessed before, his every move driven by a fierce tenacity to protect her. In that moment, she saw the true measure of his character, and the Vorkarian belief in human inferiority began to crumble like sand. But even Marcus's formidable skills were not enough to hold back the tide of vigilantes. Just as they were about to be overrun, the whine of Vorkarian engines filled the air and a sleek dropship descended from the sky, drawn by the distress beacon Wazen had activated during the fight. The Vorkarian warriors made short work of the remaining assailants, their energy weapons cutting through the humans' crude ballistics with ease. But as the smoke cleared, Wazen's heart stopped at the sight of Marcus lying motionless on the ground, his body riddled with wounds sustained while shielding her from the hail of gunfire. She cradled him in her arms, her voice breaking as she pleaded with him to stay with her. The Vorkarian commander, a grizzled veteran named Krelox, loomed over them, his eyes hard and questioning. Explain yourself, Scout. Why were you in the company of this human? Weizen took a deep breath, knowing that her next words would shape the future of both their peoples. With a heavy heart, she told Krelox the truth of Marcus's selfless actions, the words spilling out of her like a confession. Krelox listened, his expression unreadable. When Wesson had finished, he knelt beside Marcus, examining the human's wounds with a critical eye. Your tale is difficult to believe, he said, his voice gruff, but the evidence of this human's bravery is undeniable. We will take him aboard the dropship for medical treatment, but know this, Wesson. Your actions will have consequences that will echo across the stars. As the dropship lifted off, carrying the wounded Marcus and the conflicted Wazen, the fate of two worlds hung in the balance, the seeds of change planted by an unlikely bond forged in the heart of chaos. The sterile hum of medical equipment filled the air as Marcus slowly regained consciousness. His eyes fluttered open, taking in the unfamiliar surroundings of the Vorkarian medbay. The sharp angles and metallic surfaces were a stark contrast to the utilitarian design of human ships. As his vision cleared, he noticed Weizen sitting beside his bed, her violet eyes filled with concern. You're awake, she said, relief evident in her voice. I was worried you wouldn't pull through. Before Marcus could respond, the medbay doors hissed open. A tall, imposing Vorkarian strode in his bearing unmistakably that of a high-ranking officer. Wazen stiffened, rising to her feet. Father, she said, her voice a mix of respect and apprehension. General Zorgax's eyes narrowed as he took in the scene before him. Explain yourself, daughter. Why are you tending to this human? Wazen stood her ground, chin raised defiantly. This man saved my life, father. He risked everything to protect me when my ship crashed. Zorgax's face contorted with disbelief. Impossible. Humans are nothing but primitive savages. They... No, Weizen interrupted, her voice ringing out in the confined space. That's not true. Marcus showed me kindness and compassion when he had every reason to fear or hate me. Our people have been wrong about humans. As Weizen passionately recounted Marcus's actions, from pulling her from the burning wreckage to shielding her from his own people's gunfire, Zorgax's expression slowly shifted from anger to confusion. Marcus, still weak from his injuries, listened intently as Wesson spoke of the prejudices that had kept their races apart for so long. He saw the doubt creeping into Zorgax's eyes, the general's rigid posture softening almost imperceptibly. In the days that followed, as Marcus regained his strength, he found an unlikely ally in Krelox, the grizzled Vorkarian commander who had rescued them. During long conversations in the medbay, Krelox shared stories of Vorkarian history, of ancient wars, and hard-won peace. 
Our people have always been warriors, Kralox explained, his voice gruff but not unkind. But perhaps it's time we learn to be something more. As Marcus listened, he began to see the Vorkarians not as faceless enemies, but as a proud people with their own struggles and hopes. The realization struck him that peace between their races might not be an impossible dream after all. With renewed purpose, Marcus and Weizen threw themselves into crafting a plan that could bridge the gap between their peoples. They pored over star charts and resource reports, searching for a common goal that could unite humans and Vorkarians. There, Marcus said one day, pointing to an unremarkable dot on a hollow map. Planet LV-426, rich in rare minerals, but too dangerous for either of our races to colonize alone. Weizen's eyes lit up with excitement. A joint mission. We could pool our resources, our knowledge, and show both sides that we're stronger together than apart, Marcus finished. When they presented their plan to Zorgax and the Vorkarian High Command, the room erupted into heated debate. But as the arguments raged, Marcus saw a spark of something in Zorgax's eyes. Hope, perhaps, or the first glimmer of change. In the end, it was Zorgax who silenced the dissenters with a raised hand. Enough, he said, his voice carrying the weight of command. This plan is bold, perhaps even foolish, but it offers a chance for a new future, one without endless conflict. As word of the joint mission spread, Marcus and Weizen found themselves at the center of a storm. Some hailed them as visionaries, while others branded them traitors. But through it all, they clung to the bond they had forged, a living proof that their peoples could come together. Standing on the bridge of the ship that would carry them to LV-426, Marcus felt the weight of history on his shoulders. He looked at Wazen, saw the same mix of fear and grit in her eyes, and knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. Together. The launch day arrived with a mix of excitement and tension. Marcus and Wazen stood side by side in the bustling control room, overseeing final preparations. Technicians scurried about, checking systems and running diagnostics. The air crackled with anticipation. Suddenly, alarms blared. Red lights flashed across control panels. Marcus sprinted to a nearby console, fingers flying over the interface. We've lost contact with the launch pad, he shouted. Someone's overridden the security protocols. Weezen's eyes widened. Impossible. The failsafes? Her words cut off as the main view screen flickered to life, revealing a grizzled human face twisted with hatred. This is Colonel Rayner, the man snarled. I've taken control of this facility. All Vorkarian scum will surrender immediately or face termination. Marcus and Wesson exchanged shocked glances. How had Rayner's forces infiltrated so quickly? We need to act fast, Marcus said, voice low. If Rayner destroys that ship, everything we've worked for is lost. They gathered a small team, a mix of human and Vorkarian personnel caught in the control room when the takeover began. Weizen pulled up schematics of the facility on a data pad. There's a maintenance tunnel here, she pointed. It leads directly under the launch pad, if we can reach it. Marcus nodded grimly. We might have a chance to stop this. They moved swiftly through dim corridors, every shadow potentially concealing an enemy. At one junction, they encountered a pair of Rainer's men. A brief, intense firefight erupted. Marcus dove for cover, squeezing off precise shots that dropped both hostiles. Weizen stared at him, impressed. You fight well, for a human. Marcus managed a tight smile. You're not so bad yourself, for a Vorkarian. They pressed on, finally reaching the access hatch to the maintenance tunnel. As Marcus worked to bypass the security lock, Weizen kept watch. Why do you think Rayner hates us so much? She asked quietly. Marcus paused, choosing his words carefully. War leaves deep scars. Some people can't let go of that pain. The hatch slid open with a hiss. They descended into darkness, following twisting pipes and conduits. The rumble of machinery grew louder as they neared the launch pad. Emerging into a cavernous space beneath the pad itself, they saw Rainer's men swarming around the massive engines of the human ship. Explosive charges were being affixed to critical systems. 
We're out of time, Marcus whispered. We have to take out Rainer now. They split up, using the shadows and machinery for cover. Marcus crept toward where Rainer stood, barking orders. Wiz encircled around, preparing to flank. Just as Marcus prepared to make his move, a stray bit of debris crunched under his boot. Rainer whirled, eyes blazing with fury as he recognized the intruder. Traitor! Rainer roared, drawing his sidearm. You'd side with these aliens over your own kind? Marcus stood his ground. This isn't about sides, Rainer. It's about building a future without endless bloodshed. There can never be peace with them, Rainer snarled, leveling his weapon. In that instant, Weizen burst from cover, tackling Rainer. The colonel's shot went wide. Marcus rushed forward, joining the struggle. For a moment, Human and Vorkarian fought as one against a common foe. Rainer thrashed wildly, but their combined strength overwhelmed him. With a final desperate surge, Marcus wrenched the gun from Rainer's grasp. It's over, Marcus panted. Rainer sagged in defeat, the fight draining from him. As Weizen secured his restraints, Marcus sent the all-clear signal. Security forces swarmed in, rounding up the remaining saboteurs. In the aftermath, Marcus and Wezen stood on the launch pad, gazing up at the ships that would carry them to LV-426. The events of the day deeply affected on both of them. Do you think we can really change things? Wezen asked softly. Marcus took a deep breath. I don't know, but we have to try. As final preparations resumed around them, they shared a look of quiet commitment. Whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. The massive engines of the human and Vorkarian ships roared to life, propelling them into the vast expanse of space. Marcus stood at the helm of the human vessel, his eyes fixed on the display as stars streaked by. Beside him, Wezen monitored the Vorkarian ship's systems, her violet eyes darting between displays. Approaching the Kaldor belt, Wazen announced, her voice tense. Sensors detecting multiple large objects. Marcus leaned forward, gripping the control stick. I see them. Looks like we're in for a bumpy ride. The asteroid field loomed before them, a chaotic mass of tumbling rocks and debris. Marcus's hands flew over the controls, adjusting course to avoid the larger chunks. Wazen's fingers danced across her own console, Vorkarian scanning technology mapping the safest route. Hard to port, Wazen shouted. Marcus reacted instantly, jerking the ship left as a massive asteroid hurtled past, missing them by mere meters. For hours, they navigated the treacherous field. Sweat beaded on Marcus's forehead as he pushed the ship's maneuvering thrusters to their limits. Wazen's voice guided him, a constant stream of data and warnings. A violent shudder rocked the human ship. Alarms blared as red warning lights flashed across the console. Status report, Marcus barked. Direct hit to the primary engines, a crew member responded. We're losing power fast. Marcus cursed under his breath. He keyed the calm to the Vorkarian vessel. Krelox, our ship's been hit. We need to dock and continue on your vessel. Silence hung in the air for a moment before Krelox's gruff voice came through. Understood. Prepare for docking procedures. As the two ships carefully maneuvered together, Marcus turned to Wezen. This isn't going to be easy. Your people and mine, forced together in close quarters. Weizen nodded grimly. We'll make it work. We have to. The docking process went smoothly, but tensions flared as soon as the airlock opened. Human and Vorkarian crew members eyed each other warily, old prejudices bubbling to the surface. I won't share a bunk with one of them, a human technician muttered. A Vorkarian warrior bristled. Your stench offends me, human. Marcus stepped between them, his voice firm. Enough. We're all one crew now. Our survival depends on working together. Over the next few days, Marcus and Wazen worked tirelessly to integrate the two teams. They organized joint training sessions, mixed seating arrangements in the mess hall, and paired humans and Vorkarians together for maintenance tasks. Progress was slow, but small breakthroughs emerged. A human engineer marveled at Vorkarian propulsion technology. A Vorkarian tactician found himself impressed by human adaptability. As they approached their destination, Marcus called a briefing. 
the assembled crew fell silent as he pulled up scans of the planet. LV-426 is no paradise, Marcus said bluntly. Extreme temperatures, toxic atmosphere, unstable terrain. We'll need every one of us working together to survive down there. Weizen stepped forward. Marcus and I will lead a scouting team to the surface. We'll assess potential landing sites and any immediate threats. The shuttle ride through the planet's turbulent atmosphere was rough. As they touched down on the barren surface, Marcus felt the weight of their mission pressing down on him. The scouting team spread out, taking samples and readings. The harsh wind howled around them, carrying stinging particles that pelted their protective suits. Suddenly, the ground trembled. A massive shape burst from beneath the rocky soil, all teeth and claws and primal fury. The beast towered over them, its roar drowning out their shouts of alarm. Fall back! Marcus yelled, drawing his weapon. The creature lunged, its jaws snapping shut inches from a human scientist's head. Weizen fired her energy pistol, the blast scorching the monster's hide, but barely slowing it down. The beast whirled, focusing its rage on her. Marcus saw his chance. Vorkarians suppressing fire, humans flank it. In that moment, there was no hesitation. Human and Vorkarian moved as one, their strengths complementing each other perfectly. Energy blasts from Vorkarian weapons disoriented the creature while precise shots from human rifles found weak points in its armored skin. With a final, defiant roar, the beast crashed to the ground. As the dust settled, human and Vorkarian alike stared at each other in newfound respect. Marcus helped Wazen to her feet, both of them breathing heavily. You okay? She nodded, a glimmer of hope in her eyes. We did it. Together. As they secured the landing zone and prepared for the main expedition's arrival, Marcus and Weizen knew that this was only the beginning. The challenges ahead would test them all, but for the first time, it felt like they truly had a chance at forging a new future. The harsh winds of LV-426 howled outside as Marcus and Weizen huddled over a holographic display in the command center. Their temporary outpost, a collection of prefabricated structures, stood as a testament to human Vorkarian cooperation. These mineral deposits are unlike anything we've seen, Marcus said, zooming in on a section of the subterranean map. His fingers traced the winding network of caverns beneath the surface. Weizen nodded, her violet eyes reflecting the blue glow of the hologram. The concentrations are off the charts. If we can extract even a fraction of this, it could revolutionize both our technologies. They assembled a joint team for the initial expedition. Humans and Vorkarians worked side by side, setting up equipment and double-checking protective gear. The air crackled with nervous energy as they prepared to descend into the unknown. The cavern stretched before them, vast and eerily silent. Stalactites hung like teeth from the ceiling, casting strange shadows in the beams of their headlamps. Marcus led the way, his boots crunching on the uneven ground. Watch your step, he called back. The terrain's unstable. A human geologist, Dr. Chen, crouched to examine a glittering vein of ore in the cavern wall. This concentration, it's incredible, she breathed. Suddenly, the ground beneath them trembled. A low, chittering sound echoed through the cavern. What was that? A Vorkarian warrior hissed, raising his energy rifle. Before anyone could respond, the cavern floor erupted. Creatures burst forth, a writhing mass of claws and razor-sharp mandibles. Their segmented bodies gleamed in the harsh light of the team's lamps. Fall back! Marcus shouted, firing his weapon at the nearest monster. The team scrambled for cover, retreating deeper into the cavern network. They found themselves cornered in a large chamber, the entrance too narrow for the creatures to swarm through at once. Marcus surveyed their dwindling supplies and the exhausted faces of his team. We need a plan, he muttered, mind racing. Then it hit him. The narrow passage. We can use it to our advantage. Marcus outlined his strategy. They would lure the creatures into the chamber, using themselves as bait. Once inside, they'd seal off the entrance, trapping the beasts in a confined space where they could be picked off. Weizen nodded grimly. It's risky, but it might work. I'll lead the strike force. 
She assembled a small team of humans and Vorkarians, each armed with a mix of weaponry. The plan was set in motion. The cavern echoed with the sound of weapons fire and inhuman shrieks. Wazen's voice cut through the chaos, barking orders in a mix of human and Vorkarian languages. The creatures poured into the chamber, only to find themselves caught in a deadly crossfire. When it was over, the floor was littered with the smoking corpses of the subterranean predators. But victory had come at a cost. Both humans and Vorkarians lay among the fallen, their sacrifice a stark reminder of the dangers they faced. In the aftermath, Marcus and Wiesen worked tirelessly to establish a fortified mining base. They oversaw the construction of reinforced structures and the installation of advanced security systems. Human ingenuity meshed with Vorkarian technology, creating a fortress deep within the planet's crust. As the days turned to weeks, Marcus found himself drawn more and more to Wiesen. They spent long hours together, discussing strategy and sharing stories of their respective worlds. One evening, as they stood on an observation platform overlooking the bustling mining operation, Wesen turned to Marcus. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm glad you're here, she said softly. Marcus felt a warmth spread through his chest. He reached out, hesitantly taking Wiesen's hand. To his surprise, she didn't pull away. But their moment was interrupted by the arrival of a Vorkarian official. His disapproving gaze fell upon their clasped hands, and Wiesen quickly stepped back. Later, in the privacy of her quarters, Wiesen paced restlessly. This, whatever it is between us, she said, voice strained, my people would never understand. Marcus watched her, his heart heavy. Does that mean we have to end it? Wiesen stopped, meeting his eyes. No, she said firmly. It means we have to fight harder to make them understand. As the mission progressed, their bond deepened. They faced each new challenge together, their partnership a beacon of hope for the entire crew. Humans and Vorkarians began to mingle more freely, sharing meals and swapping stories. But as the holds of their ships filled with precious minerals, a new tension arose. The end of the mission loomed, bringing with it the prospect of separation. One night, as they stood beneath the alien stars, Marcus voiced the fear they both shared. What happens when we go home? Weizen's grip on his hand tightened. I don't know, she admitted. But I'm not ready to let this go. They stood in silence, the weight of their uncertain future hanging between them. The mission had brought them together, but could their bond survive in a galaxy still divided by centuries of conflict? The harsh winds of LV-426 whipped around Marcus and Wesson as they stood on the observation deck, watching the last of the mining equipment being loaded onto the transport ships. The success of their mission burdened immensely on both of them, overshadowed by the looming reality of their impending separation. Marcus turned to Wesson, his voice barely audible over the howling gale. We can't just let this end, not after everything we've been through. Weizen's violet eyes met his, a mix of dedication and uncertainty swirling within them. What are you suggesting? A permanent outpost, here on LV-426, a place where humans and Vorkarians can continue working together. Weizen's antenna twitched as she considered the idea. It's bold, Marcus. Our people have centuries of mistrust to overcome. Then let's start overcoming it now, Marcus insisted, gesturing to the bustling activity below. Look at what we've accomplished here. This could be the key to lasting peace. They spent the next several days drafting their proposal, poring over resource projections and potential benefits. When the time came to present their plan, they stood side by side before a joint council of human and Vorkarian leaders. Marcus stepped forward, his voice steady despite the tension in the room. Distinguished representatives, we stand before you today not just as a human and a Vorkarian, but as partners who have witnessed firsthand the potential of our combined strengths. Wiesen continued, her translator conveying the passion in her words. The challenges we faced on LV-426 have forged bonds stronger than any treaty. We propose a permanent outpost, a symbol of ongoing cooperation between our peoples. Murmurs rippled through the assembly. A human counselor leaned forward, skepticism etched on his face. 
And how do you propose to maintain order between our species in such close quarters? By building on the foundation we've already established, Marcus replied. We've created integrated teams, shared living spaces, even a common mess hall. It works because we choose to make it work. A Vorkarian elder chittered disapprovingly. Our warriors were not meant to live alongside humans indefinitely. It goes against our very nature. Weizen's antennae flattened against her head, a sign of her intensity. With respect, elder, our nature is what we choose it to be. The Vorkarian way has always been to adapt and overcome. This is our chance to evolve beyond ancient grudges. The debate raged for hours, with hardliners on both sides voicing their objections. But as more of the joint mission successes were presented, the tide began to turn. Moderates spoke up in support, bolstered by the first-hand accounts of those who had served on LV-426. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the Council reached its decision. The outpost proposal was approved. Marcus and Wazen threw themselves into the work of bringing their vision to life. They pored over blueprints, integrating human and Vorkarian design elements to create a truly collaborative space. Living quarters were constructed with adjustable atmospheric controls to accommodate both species' needs. Research facilities housed equipment from both worlds, encouraging the sharing of knowledge and technology. As the outpost took shape, Marcus watched a human engineer and a Vorkarian technician working together to calibrate a new sensor array. The sight filled him with hope, but a nagging worry persisted. Not everyone's on board with this he confided to Wezen as they inspected a newly completed section of the outpost. I've heard whispers of discontent, especially among some of the old guard. Wezen nodded grimly. The same on our side. General Zorgax's second-in-command, Colonel Graxer, has been particularly vocal in his opposition. Their fears were realized when a series of mysterious malfunctions began plaguing the outpost's construction. Critical systems failed at crucial moments and supplies went missing. It wasn't until a human worker nearly died in a faulty airlock that Marcus and Wazen realized the true extent of the threat they faced. This ends now, Marcus growled, hitting his fist on the table during an emergency meeting. We need a unified security force, humans and Vorkarians working together to root out these saboteurs. Wazen's antenna quivered with agreement. I'll handpick our best warriors to work alongside your security teams. We'll show them that our strength lies in our unity. The Joint Security Force moved swiftly, uncovering a network of conspirators led by Colonel Graxer and remnants of Colonel Rayner's human extremist faction. As they closed in on the saboteur's hideout, Marcus and Weizen found themselves face to face with the ringleaders. Graxor's mandibles clicked menacingly as he leveled his energy rifle at them. This abomination ends here. The Vorkarian people will never bow to human influence. Marcus raised his hands, his voice calm but firm. Look around you, Graxor. The future is already here. We're not asking anyone to bow. We're inviting you to stand beside us as equals. Weizen stepped forward, her eyes locked on her fellow Vorkarian. Remember our history, Graxor. Our greatest victories came when we adapted, when we embraced change. This is no different. For a moment, the air crackled with tension. Then slowly, Graxor lowered his weapon. Perhaps, perhaps I have been too rigid in my thinking. As the last of the opposition was neutralized, Marcus and Wazen stood atop the newly completed central spire of Unity Outpost. The harsh landscape of LV-426 stretched out before them, a testament to the challenges they had overcome together. Weizen's hand found Marcus's, their fingers intertwining. We've come so far, she said softly. Marcus nodded, his eyes on the horizon. And we've got so much further to go, but we'll do it together. Marcus and Weizen stood in the newly constructed research hub of Unity Outpost, surrounded by a bustling mix of human and Vorkarian scientists. The air hummed with the sound of advanced equipment and the chatter of two species working side by side. Dr. Chen, how's progress on the new energy converter? Marcus asked, approaching a human scientist, hunched over a complex array of crystals and circuitry. 
Dr. Chen looked up, her eyes bright with excitement. We're close to a breakthrough. The Vorkarian crystal matrix is amplifying the output beyond our initial projections. Nearby, a Vorkarian researcher chittered in agreement. Yes, but we must stabilize the quantum fluctuations. Human precision instruments are proving invaluable for this task. Weizen nodded approvingly. This is exactly the kind of collaboration we hoped for, she said to Marcus in a low voice. But we still have a long way to go. As if on cue, raised voices drew their attention to the far side of the lab. A human engineer and a Vorkarian technician were engaged in a heated debate, their translator units struggling to keep up with the rapid-fire exchange. The vector alignment must be precise, the Vorkarian insisted, mandibles clicking in agitation. And I'm telling you, your calculations don't account for subspace interference, the human shot back. Marcus and Wazen exchanged a glance before moving to intervene. They spent the next hour mediating the dispute, encouraging both sides to explain their reasoning and find common ground. As the tension in the lab subsided, an alarm blared from a nearby console. A young Vorkarian scientist rushed over, antennae twitching wildly. Commander Wazen, we've detected an anomaly in the planet's crust. It, it doesn't match any known geological formation. Marcus leaned in, studying the readouts. These energy signatures, they're artificial. We need to investigate this immediately. Within hours, Marcus and Wesson led a team into the depths of LV-426. They navigated through winding tunnels, their path illuminated by the soft glow of bioluminescent Vorkarian lamps. Look at these walls, Dr. Chen said, running her hand along the smooth surface. No natural process could have formed these passages. Weizen's antennae quivered as she examined a series of intricate glyphs etched into the stone. This language, it's unlike anything in our databases. Suddenly, the tunnel opened into a vast chamber. The team stood in awe, gazing at towering structures of an unknown metal that seemed to defy gravity. By the first hive, Weizen breathed, her normally composed demeanor shaken. Marcus activated his comm unit. Base camp, are you getting this? We've discovered a city, an ancient underground city. As they explored the ruins, they came across a central structure housing rows upon rows of crystalline data storage devices. Marcus carefully extracted one, slotting it into a portable reader. This is incredible, he murmured as information flowed across the screen. Energy manipulation theories centuries beyond our current understanding. Star maps of uncharted sectors... Weizen leaned in, her eyes wide. Marcus, look at this. Schematics for a drive system that could cut our interstellar travel time by half. Their excitement was short-lived. The ground trembled, and the sound of heavy footsteps echoed through the chamber. General Zorgax strode in, flanked by a contingent of heavily armed Vorkarian warriors. I'll take that, Zorgax growled, reaching for the data crystal. Marcus stepped back, shielding the device. General, this discovery belongs to all of us. We need to study it together, for the benefit of both our species. Zorgax's eyes narrowed. The Vorkarian Empire cannot risk such power falling into human hands. Stand aside, or we will take it by force. Weizen moved to stand beside Marcus, her posture rigid. General, please. This technology could solve the resource crises on both our worlds. We must work together. For a tense moment, the only sound was the low hum of energy weapons powering up. Marcus's mind raced, searching for a way to defuse the situation. General, he said carefully, consider the potential. With this knowledge, we could end the wars over resources that have plagued both our species. We could explore the galaxy together as allies. Zorgax's mandibles twitched, a sign of internal conflict. And if the humans decide to use this power against us? Then we would have failed, Wazen said softly. But isn't the possibility of true peace worth the risk? The silence stretched on, broken only by the gentle pulsing of the ancient technology surrounding them. Finally, Zorgax lowered his weapon. Very well, he said gruffly. We will study these ruins together, but know that I will be watching closely. As Zorgax's forces stood down, 
Marcus and Weizen shared a look of relief and cautious optimism. The path ahead would be challenging, but they had taken the first step towards a truly united future. In the days that followed, Unity Outpost buzzed with renewed energy. Human and Vorkarian scientists worked side by side, unraveling the secrets of the ancient civilization. Each new discovery brought fresh challenges and opportunities for collaboration. Marcus watched as Dr. Chen and a Vorkarian physicist pored over a holographic display, their earlier disagreements forgotten in the face of groundbreaking research. Nearby, a mixed team tested a prototype energy converter, its soft blue glow a testament to the power of their combined knowledge. Weizen approached, her antennae twitching with barely contained excitement. Marcus, you need to see this. We've deciphered part of their language. It speaks of a network of worlds, linked by technology, we're only beginning to understand. Marcus grinned, feeling a familiar thrill of discovery. Then we'd better get to work. We've got a galaxy to explore. Marcus wiped the sweat from his brow as he stepped back from the holographic display. The new research facility hummed with activity, a testament to the collaboration between humans and Vorkarians. He watched as Dr. Chen adjusted a series of complex equations floating in the air before her. How's it looking, Sarah? Marcus asked, approaching the scientist. Dr. Chen's eyes never left the display. We're close, Marcus. The energy output is off the charts, but containment is still an issue. Across the room, Weizen chittered excitedly to a group of Vorkarian researchers. Her antennae twitched as she manipulated a three-dimensional model of the alien power source. Marcus couldn't help but smile at her enthusiasm. Months passed in a blur of trial and error. Marcus found himself working late into the night, poring over data streams and running simulations. One evening, as he rubbed his tired eyes, Weizen approached with a steaming cup of coffee. You should rest, she said, her mandibles clicking softly. Marcus took a grateful sip. Thanks, but I think we're on to something here. Look at this energy signature. Weizen leaned in, her compound eyes reflecting the holographic readout. Suddenly, she stiffened. Marcus, adjust the quantum resonance by 0.03%. He complied, and the display erupted in a dazzling array of interlocking energy fields. They stared in awe as the system stabilized, pulsing with a soft blue light. We did it, Marcus breathed. The next day, they presented their findings to a joint council of human and Vorkarian leaders. Marcus paced nervously as Wesson outlined their proposal for a long-range exploratory mission. General Zorgax's mandibles clacked skeptically. This technology is untested. The risks are too great. Marcus stepped forward. With all due respect, General, the potential benefits far outweigh the risks. Imagine what we could discover out there, together. After hours of heated debate, the Council finally gave their approval. The hangar bay buzzed with activity as crews worked tirelessly to retrofit the chosen ship with the new power source. Marcus oversaw the integration, his heart racing with each successful test. As the launch date approached, a series of unexplained malfunctions plagued the outpost. Marcus found himself pulled from his work to investigate a ruptured coolant line in the engineering sector. This wasn't an accident, he said grimly, examining the clean cut in the piping. Weizen nodded, her antennae twitching nervously. We've had reports of missing equipment in the armory as well. Someone is trying to sabotage us. They spent sleepless nights reviewing security footage and patrol patterns. Finally, Marcus spotted a discrepancy in the sensor logs. There, he pointed to a blank section of the feed. They're using our own systems against us. Weizen's eyes narrowed. Then we'll give them exactly what they want. They set their trap, using a false shipment of critical components as bait. Marcus crouched in the shadows of the cargo bay, his pulse pounding in his ears. Beside him, Wazen's exoskeleton blended seamlessly with the darkness. The bay doors hissed open, and a group of figures slipped inside. Marcus tensed as he recognized both human and Vorkarian silhouettes among them. At Wazen's signal, they sprang into action. Stun beams crisscrossed the room as the security teams emerged from hiding. Marcus tackled a human assailant, grappling for control of an energy pistol. Nearby, 
Wazen's powerful limbs locked a Vorkarian extremist in place. In minutes, it was over. The saboteurs were rounded up, their plot foiled. Marcus stood panting, surveying the scene with a mix of relief and sadness. I had hoped we were past this, he said softly. Wiesen placed a comforting hand on his shoulder. We've come far, but there's still work to be done. This is why our mission is so important. With the threat neutralized, the final preparations for launch proceeded at a feverish pace. Marcus found himself on the bridge of the newly christened Unity Explorer, running through pre-flight checks with a crew of eager human and Vorkarian volunteers. He turned to find Wazen at his side, her eyes shining with excitement and a hint of apprehension. Are you ready for this? he asked. Wazen's antennae quivered. No, but let's do it anyway. As the ship's engines hummed to life, powered by the alien technology they had worked so hard to understand, Marcus felt a surge of hope. They were about to embark on a journey into the unknown, not as two species, but as one united crew. The Unity Explorer rose from the launch pad, leaving the familiar confines of LV-426 behind. As they accelerated towards the stars, Marcus and Wizen shared a look of purpose. Whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. The Unity Explorer sliced through the void, its advanced engines humming with power derived from ancient alien technology. Marcus stood on the bridge, his eyes fixed on the holographic display showing their latest astronomical findings. Another binary system, Commander, reported Ensign Chen, her fingers dancing across the control panel. Spectral analysis indicates the presence of multiple habitable planets. Marcus nodded, a sense of wonder filling him. Log it and prepare a detailed report. We'll transmit the data back to Unity Outpost with our next burst. Weizen entered the bridge, her antennae twitching with excitement. Marcus, you need to see this. We've detected an anomaly in Sector Gamma 9. They huddled over the sensor readouts, studying the strange energy signature. As the Unity Explorer drew closer, a massive shape loomed before them, dwarfing their vessel. By the first hive, Weizen breathed, her compound eyes wide. The alien ship hung motionless against the backdrop of stars, its hull marred by strange organic protrusions. No lights flickered in its viewports. No signs of life emanated from its cavernous form. Marcus turned to his crew, noting the mix of fear and curiosity on their faces. Prepare a boarding party. We need to investigate. As they suited up in the airlock, Lieutenant Cora, a seasoned Vorkarian warrior, voiced her concerns. Commander, this feels unwise. We don't know what's waiting for us in there. Marcus secured his helmet, meeting Cora's gaze. I understand the risks, Lieutenant, but the potential knowledge we could gain is too valuable to ignore. The boarding party crossed the void between ships, their mag boots clanking against the alien hull. Marcus led the way, cutting through a sealed hatch with a plasma torch. They entered a vast, dimly lit chamber. The air was thick and stale, carrying a sickly sweet odor that made Marcus's stomach churn. Their helmet lights cut through the gloom, revealing twisted metal and strange organic growths coating the walls. What happened here? Dr. Reyes whispered, her voice tight with fear. As they pressed deeper into the ship's bowels, they came upon a sight that stopped them in their tracks. Alien bodies littered the floor, their forms contorted in poses of agony. The creatures were unlike anything they had encountered before, multi-limbed, with exoskeletons that seemed to have partially melted. Marcus knelt beside one of the corpses, his scanner whirring. These beings have been dead for centuries, but the cause, I've never seen anything like it. Weizen examined a nearby console, her fingers tracing strange symbols. Marcus, look at this. It appears to be some kind of research log. As she worked to decipher the alien text, a low moan echoed through the corridor. Lieutenant Cora spun, her weapon raised. What was that? Everyone, stay calm, Marcus ordered, but his heart raced. Let's finish our scans and get out of here. They hurried through their examination, collecting samples and data. As they made their way back to the airlock, Ensign Chen stumbled, clutching her head. Chen, are you all right? Marcus asked, steadying her. 
She nodded weakly. Just a headache, sir. I'll be fine. But as they returned to the Unity Explorer, it became clear that something was very wrong. Chen's condition deteriorated rapidly, her skin taking on a sickly pallor. Within hours, other members of the boarding party began showing similar symptoms. Marcus paced the medbay, watching as Dr. Reyes struggled to stabilize the affected crew members. What's happening to them, Doctor? Reyes shook her head, frustration evident in her voice. I don't know. Their cellular structure is... changing. It's unlike any pathogen I've ever encountered. The ship erupted into chaos as more crew members fell ill. Marcus made the difficult decision to implement quarantine protocols, sealing off entire decks to contain the spread. In the command center, tensions flared between the human and Vorkarian crew members. This is your fault, snarled a Vorkarian technician. Humans and their reckless curiosity. We were all on board with the decision to investigate, a human officer shot back. Don't try to pin this on us. Marcus slammed his hand on the console, silencing the argument. Enough! We don't have time for this. We need solutions, not blame. Weizen approached, her eyes gleaming with a desperate hope. Marcus, I think I've found something. The ancient alien database we discovered on LV-426. It contains advanced medical knowledge. If we can adapt it to this situation... Marcus nodded, understanding the implications. Do it, whatever it takes. As Weizen and a team of scientists worked tirelessly to develop a cure, Marcus felt the first symptoms of the alien contagion take hold. His vision blurred, and a burning sensation spread through his body. Marcus, no, Weizen said, her voice breaking as she saw his condition. You can't... He gripped her hand, forcing a smile. Keep working, Weizen. I volunteer as the test subject. If anyone can figure this out, it's you. Days blurred together as Marcus's condition worsened. He drifted in and out of consciousness, aware only of Wazen's constant presence at his side. Through fevered dreams, he heard her voice, felt her touch as she fought to save him and the rest of the crew. In a moment of clarity, Marcus opened his eyes to see Wazen standing over him, a vial of glowing liquid in her hand. Her antennae drooped with exhaustion, but her eyes shone with triumph. We did it, Marcus, she said softly. The cure is ready. He tried to speak, but no words came. As darkness closed in around him, Marcus felt a final surge of pride and love for the remarkable being who had changed his life. Weizen watched, her heart breaking, as Marcus's eyes closed for the last time. She allowed herself a moment of grief before turning to administer the cure to the other afflicted crew members. As the Unity Explorer limped back towards Unity Outpost, Weizen stood vigil over Marcus's body. She touched the cold stasis pod, her mind filled with memories of their journey together. I will carry on our work, she whispered, for both of us. The ship emerged from faster-than-light travel, Unity Outpost growing larger in the viewscreen. Wazen straightened her posture, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The crew of the Unity Explorer had been forever changed by their harrowing experience, but the bond between human and Vorkarian had never been stronger. As they prepared to dock, Wazen gazed out at the stars, knowing that somewhere out there, new discoveries and new dangers awaited. But for now, they had a legacy to honor and a future to build. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.